Hi everyone, Kramon here for the Techies. Today I'm going to show you how to use some basic constraints in 3ds Max. So I'm going to be showing you the hinge constraint and the point to point constraints. They're the uh, most basic ones and they're quite useful too. Alright, so we're going to set up a little scene here. We're going to make a post like so and uh, we're going to make a platform on the top of it. it goes out like that. Let's scale that up uh, this way. Now we're going to apply a hinge constraint and what that's going to do is, it, is it's going to make an invisible axis that's attached to this post and that uh, this platform rotates around. So um, now another constraint that we're going to do is point to point. So to demonstrate that I'm going to make another little box here on the edge of this platform. There we go. And that will connect to a single point on this rotating platform. Now to get it all in motion we're gonna put a sphere out here, a ball that is going to drop on top of this platform making it spin, hopefully. So alright, now let's, uh, first thing we need to do is we gotta make the solid rigid body collection. So there we go, now these are affected by physics. Okay, now uh, we want to make a uh, constraint solver. What this does is it selects a couple of constraints and it uh, says that hey these constraints are going to work together and all of the constraints that are in different systems uh, they're not going to be affected by the ones in this system. So uh, yeah, now we can actually make the uh, constraints. So we got to select this post and this platform and we're going to make the create hinge constraint. There we go. Now we want to go into the modify tab and make sure that our parent body is um, the box, the post right here. So there you go and the child is the number two. Uh, the child is the one that's actually going to be spinning around the axis and you can see the axis right here is this green arrow. Okay, now uh, we want to make the point to point constraint. We're going to press that and uh, here you can see that the parent and body and a parent and child are messed up so we'll have to select that again and there we go. Alright, uh, now we have to select both of these constraints that we added. Uh, we gotta add them to our constraint solver so we can select both of these. There we go, they are added in and we gotta make sure that this constraint solver works with this rigid body so press here and then select your rigid body collection. There we go, it is selected. Alright, now we just gotta add some mass to these objects and then we should be good to go. Alright, uh, we'll set this to maybe four, the platform and the ball, and uh, this cube here on the end, we'll set it to two. Uh, actually, I wanna elongate this cube, so um, convert to poly and we'll extrude this um, edge right here. Alright, that, that'll make it more noticeable. Okay, now um, this should be good to go. Uh, if we... let me try to think here. Oh yeah, one more thing before you get going. You gotta go and select your rigid body, I mean uh, constraint solver, sorry. Uh, select to go to the modify tab and you want to set this down, uh, this uh, deactivation threshold. It's defaultly is that's 10, uh, but uh, if you set it down to 1, it'll uh, make things work better. Just trust me, you want to do that. Otherwise, the hinges kind of stop working after a while. Uh, you don't want that. Okay, so everything should be good now. Let's go ahead and uh, preview this. Alright, press P, see what happens. Alright, there you go. You see that the ball, it bounces off this uh, uh, platform here, this rotating platform, makes it almost make a makes it make a full turn, and then it's weighed down by this um, one point edge on the uh, I mean object on the edge of the rotating platform. Um, so uh, that's pretty much all there is to these constraints. You can of course you can go into more detail with how they work. You can go to the modify tab. You can change things like their 
strength. They can, you can make them breakable. Say if uh, if it's hit by the ball too hard, then it'll snap. That makes it a bit more realistic. You can change their uh, minimum and maximum angles. That's kind of self-explanatory. And the uh, same thing goes for the one-point selection. Um, so uh, that's it for basic constraints. They're very versatile. I hope you enjoy using them. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you. This has been Kremlin for the Techies. You want a bit more social interaction than staring at videos all day? You should go to th3techies.com and join the forum.